grumpy, cranky, whatever we're going to call him, Bob. He was Bob 2.0, but he's decided to change. He no longer comes from the net. Has decided we're go has decided we're going to start with Apple. <laughs> oh, God. It, uh, what? There, there's one particular thing I already added a note to about uh, not not the new pin connector, but uh, something you've mentioned before, Bit. Yeah. Baggage. And, and Rusty, I think you know what, what I mean. Uh... <laughs> well, go ahead and elaborate. You know what? Lead us off, Bob, since you've already started. <laughs> Apple CEO Tim Cook knocks Windows 8 for the legacy baggage, essentially. My question is, yeah. isn't iOS doing that? <laughs> Just... Well, no, 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 but Tim Cook learned from Steve Jobs. See, the other guy sucks. When I do it, it's magic, but when the other guy does it, it sucks. <laughs> well, all right, so you're, all right, so obviously Bob has decided, because I knew, I knew Tim Cook used in uh, all things digital, describing Windows 8 uh, as baggage, right? And I guess it's, let me, let me see if I get his quote correct. Is in my view, the tablet and the PC are different. Um, products are about trade-offs, and you have to make tough decisions. You have to choose. And, uh, and what was his exact words? I think you. No, well, no, no. Well, the part well, in this quotes. Is quoted. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming this is because these are in quotes about what Tim Cook said. It, it, it said, and he says, you have to make tough decisions. You have to choose. The fact is, the more you look at a tablet as a PC, the more baggage from the past affects the product. And I but posted this the part iPad. for that last sentence, though, because um, I watched the, the All Things Digital. I thought it was funny. I thought the whole thing about he should sell a uh, ping to Google uh, for Google Plus to use it, and he was laughing his ass. I thought, I, I thought that was that was funny. But it was I, I found this specific sentence quite interesting. Because the fact is, the more you look at a tablet as a PC, the more baggage from the past affects the product. I don't think that, I mean, it, I, I would love more elaboration on what he's calling the necessary baggage. Because if then we have a benchmark and we're saying, in other words, I know what he's trying to say is, look, the tablet is not a PC and, and, don't, and then basically don't judge it on its merits. But it's not a niche device like a phone. Uh, it, it, you could say it's well. I, that's device, how Apple envisions it. Apple envisions it as a dumb terminal, which does nothing but link to something that does something. That's how Apple well, envisions well, it. And, and here's my grade: Get your damn iOS out of my OS ten. <laughs> But so, okay. but no 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 mountain lion must be iOS here. It, it must that, be <laughs> that is where it boils down to me. Okay, you're talking a double standard here because they're talking about you know not no 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 no, 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 type no atmosphere, but Bob, they're bringing it to the damn desktop. Bob, let's make it very clear. Tim Cook is saying you can't bring the desktop to the tablet. He's not saying it's wrong to bring the tablet to the desktop. But you, heaven forbid, you bring the desktop to the tablet. You can't do that. That that's just wrong. The, the reverse logic does not make any fucking sense. <laughs> but everybody wants a tablet. That's why you need to bring the tablet to the desktop. That's what's wrong with the desktop. It isn't tablety enough. <laughs> my point, my point of it is, is that this is my same argument as we did on Tuesday Big Show. The, I'm gonna, these are his words again. The fact is, the more you look at a tablet as a PC, let's take that context there. Again, what did we argue on Tuesday? This is very limited in scope. Why is a form factor so important? A computing device, like a personal computer, should be agnostic to a form factor. And... Yes, Tim Cook, I'm going to look at anything that I want that 
that you say is going, short of it being something that we knew were niche devices like PDAs and things like that, when we have things like saying we, we're post-PC, which is clearly an Apple-generated mantra line, um, you've already made the context essentially the PC part of the equation because you've made the connection of saying we're post. Now, I know that Tim Cook and Akina said, well, it means that we don't necessarily have to go to the PC for everything. Okay, that's fine, but in many, the, 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 I'm glad that he actually kind of marginalized the product in that because the original, the original mantra carried a lot more, I think, baggage to it, which you know initiated my entire piss off and rubbing mood to 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 uh, you know begin with a long time ago. But clearly, this is limited in scope in my opinion. A, a tablet is denoting a form factor, which should be irrelevant to computing. computing well, I, 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 I agree with you, but my personal assessment is both Microsoft and Apple are dead wrong for entirely different reasons. Mm -hmm. Apple is trying to treat them like their own little sandboxed islands, and never the tween shall meet. You know, tablet and PC, tablet and PC, like east and west, and never the tween shall meet. Uh, and Microsoft is saying... I shall, I shall have one OS to rule them all. And they're both dead wrong. The reality is you need a computer underneath there, but the UIs have to be different. It's just, it doesn't work. Apple's got that Absolute part right. Absolutely. Screen real estate is, 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 is an issue. Absolutely. Yeah, well, and, and that, 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 I think that's the part Apple gets in that they're, you know, saying they're separate because you interact with them different. But that doesn't mean it can't still be the same system underneath. You just need to create the hooks and or, API calls for the people to. Sure. Right. Or Rusty, let me add that. Let me one up that. It it it, it shouldn't also be net really limited in what it could do, right? Um, simple things, very very just simple things that we take for granted on the desktop. The only limitation. Be a constant hurdle on a quote unquote tablet. Yeah, the now, only I know touch is a primary input, which is my main beef, um, <laughs> really, with you know, with things like that. But I understand touch has its place. But do don't come. At, I'm definitely judging your software result and what you're giving me as a product that is supposed to augment my use to the desktop, and it's not doing it. So if my judgment is just making simple things, and I'm not the only one. Believe me, there's tons of people that have just really resorted to using the tablet as, as watching movies and playing games, right? We, we did the show on the whole survey, which was a neutral thing. Now, there is a website, wave of people... Uh, an Apple fan type website, but yeah. Well, no, there is a wave of people trying to finally get productivity apps to these devices... But it, it, they are still limited by the artificial limitations of the fact that at the end of the day it isn't an actual computer. It's a computing link device, which means it is limited. Uh, now, there's obviously going to be some limitations in that the hardware is less. But, I mean, you know what? The reality is if we can do it on a single core system with 2 gig of memory, the moment these slates start having two to four gig of memory, which really they should already, but they don't, and the ARM processors are going tri, quad, oct core, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, there will be enough system resources. It may be slower, it may be more burdensome, but it will have enough system resources to do computing. <laughs> and they kind of already do. The only real limitation is the RAM limitation, which I don't understand why they're putting so little memory in these devices. Well, I mean, look. I, I, the hardware we know is, is going to get there. But it's just this, it's so narrow in scope that we're stuck on, on a simple form factor. We're going to have touch. Guess what? We're going to have touch on other form factors. Okay? A tablet is just one of many to come. And a phone, obviously, via the screen real estate, has a trade-off of screen real estate. So we should probably concentrate on things that work well within that, inside that screen real estate. And I would say, even to this point where I think we pushed the limit too far on many things, where the screen real estate is just so cumbersome to get things done, i.e., we create the tablet. 
We want something larger, more portable than a, than a laptop uh, to do that. And that's why I always look at a tablet as a slave device to a phone. But hey, if you want to say it's something standalone, I still then by golly, make it standalone. Huh? I still think you're wrong about the slave device mentality. I think that's the no, right no, no. Way. Well, not for what would be. I mean, not for what could be created. Rusty. You don't disagree with me for what could be created, but obviously for what we have. Oh no! Right, right now, all of them, yeah, yeah. It, all of them, including Android, largely to an extent, are basically dumb terminals. They're they're not serving as a computing device. They're serving as a dumb link terminal. I, I'm going to go link to something else that's going to do it for me, and then I'm going to fetch it. You know, I, you know, maybe Gene Roddenberry was right. You know, we're just going to live in the Felix Caddis world. Oh, your your play is not actually on that pad. No, it's in the computer. That this is just a link. <laughs> All tablets that I have, even on my even on my playbook, um, I I it, it's not. I I'm going to get the keyboard that comes with it. And, and, and then it'll become more productive, but for now it's not, it, it doesn't get much use. I got, I, 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 I uh, Ben, are you I, answering I the to, chat room? Yeah, I'm referring to the uh, question in the chat room. They're yeah, well, he's, they asked him what kind of work play. does he get on his playbook. <laughs> what I do like about the playbook, it allows me to run things concurrently. I have um, been able to, to not like hit a home button and I can have things run side by side and copy. It's very quick, but yeah, you can. I can use Citrix on it, remote into my servers and things like that. But I hate virtual keyboards. Until I get their um, this new keyboard that came out, I think it'll work well with gestures because the mouse, you know, with a gesture on the mouse on the playbook is all ready for. It's really ready for gestures, and um, it's kind of like WebOS. It's intuitive, you know. You do. The same gestures on the trackpad would make sense uh, on the playbook, but I still need a hard keyboard, and the apps are still coming. As we, I, when I talk about tabs, I don't give the playbook any special exception. Hell no. Uh, he he likes the, the theory of the playbook, but he understands the in right. practice like is the limited at this time. Absolutely. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, I like the theory of the playbook. I like, in other words, the playbook's OS to me is king, along with. Well, WebOS, you know, we're, it's still struggling, struggling. But the the power and the output that I've seen that it can do in simultaneous, and I've messed with iPads, I think is far superior it, as an OS. If you want to include ecosystems and, and other things like that, no, it's not. It doesn't, it doesn't have all your damn apps if you have all these other apps in iOS. But as far as an OS goes, I'm extremely impressed with it. The concurrency that it allows, which these tablets as Tim Cook wants to put it, in such a limited scope, are going to grow up to be big boys and eventually have software um, that allows far more concurrency. And, 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 and it doesn't have to do everything that we have with desktops. It doesn't have to do everything. But well, no, it, it, well, it, it, right now, it can't do everything that desktops does because, I mean, right. a desktop has more computing power. But it can do computing it, it's you know it's it's not yeah, a simple things like yeah concurrency and not and, and navigation to be made far easier things like connecting to a local LAN and not always have to worry about connecting to an AirPlay printer um, putting well but that would require loading, loading proper loading. driver support yeah. and everything else or other stuff you know and honestly to it, the the story preceding this one sums up just how much the Apple consumer base agrees with Tim Cook that more than one million users have downloaded the latest jailbreaks. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, I, I know I put that in there, but, but you know, I don't want to stick too long because I, I, many people already know my position on tablets, and I don't want to harp too long on it because too late. You just go watch our video <laughs> history and all my opinions about, about tablets in general. But I wanted to talk about Windows 8 and how he's saying it about baggage. You know, Windows is not necessarily saying that they want to have all the full-blown freaking Windows experience um, or he's, or Tim Cook's misunderstanding Microsoft. Microsoft has made it clear that not everything that is Windows Legacy is coming to town, especially on the ARM platform. It can. And Metro right now, Metro right now, which is a massive confusion. I already, I already understand it. This is again, I like the theory of Windows 8, and I'm giving, I'm getting them the benefit of the doubt 
and I hope that Microsoft pays attention to one of our videos where we're, critique, where, where Rusty and I are critiquing Windows 8 and how they should handle that dumbass going to a Windows 7 desktop and how they should just, you know, fudge a back and all that stuff. They go watch that video on that. I'm not going to harp into it. I like the theory of Windows 8, and I like the theory of saying we want to try to give you the maximum amount of power possible and not really limit you uh, as far as software is going and type of services. I don't want to get it, I don't want to get you in the mindset of, of, of like an Android thing where anything goes. No. I expect software to do um, concurrency far better than it's on tablets. Connections and, and, and more API and things that we go into a desktop and we don't even think about it. That when we go to a tablet, it's like, damn, I can't do that. Where does this take place? And that's where the tablet operating systems are going to mature into. And they're not going to carry everything that you don't need to. For instance, you don't need to have Apple Script and all the kinds of crap that OS X has. But simple services do need to come forward. And Windows is trying to do that. But Windows has definitely made it a point that not everything that is known as Windows Legacy is going to be there for you. And obviously, developers have to use uh, all the new, you know, Windows RT crap and everything and make their uh, No, well, you, you brought up Windows 8. This is honestly what I think Microsoft's going to do with ARM Windows 8. They're going to use that to draw the line in the sand for Windows 9 so they can kill all the legacy and, uh, and sign. And basically, we are now the Metro UI. This is Windows going forward. You know, get used to it. <laughs> and they're going to use as uh, ARM as much as they can by saying, oh, yeah, all that Intel stuff, that's not coming over here. You have to make it ARM compliant and all this stuff. And while you're at it, you have to make it this compliant and this compliant. And, like, and while you're doing that work, you might want to recompile it for x86 because that's what x86 is going to do in the next release. <laughs> you know, that's, they're basically going to strong arm that. Um, and that's the, e that's the closest thing Microsoft can do to that. Yeah, and Microsoft is taking a big risk. I mean, they're, um, I think what Microsoft I, 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 I still think, despite the fact you like it and everything else, mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's going to blow up in their face because right. it, it's going to, it, it's, it's going to be, a, the user's going to look at it and go, Yep. <laughs> Windows, Windows 7 may become the new XP. Absolutely. They need to change that transition to that desktop. It's a big problem. Well, it's, it's there uh, in the corner. What corner? Off the screen. Exactly. What do you mean off the screen? What corner? The, where's the button? <laughs> yeah. But you know what I don't like? See, this is what I don't like when I read a lot of like Apple credits. Their mindset still comes from the days of the desktop wars. And basically what Microsoft is saying is that we want an OS that transcends form factor. That's essentially what they're trying to say. Get your mind off of tablets and phones and all the other crap. They want an OS that, tra that transcends form factor. 